What's going on, people? I'm Kolio Basa of this KolioBasa.com. I've got a question for you. Should Nigeria divide? What's going on, people? This is Kolio Basa of this KolioBasa.com. Did you forget? As the country continues to implode and we continue to grapple with insecurity, talk of us breaking up and everyone going their separate ways continue to gather pace. Many people I've spoken to about this topic have no problem with Nigerians splitting up. It's clear the degeneration of security in the country has made us question, do we really like each other? Kidnappings, killings, killer bandits rampaging the land, general breakdown of law and order, all this point to a failed state. So when people ask for splitting, it's not really unreasonable, but let's consider these five things. In Nigeria today, it has become increasingly common for people to marry outside their tribes. While there are still strong traditional beliefs in certain circles that some tribes should not intermarry, the reality is that intertribal marriages is rampant in the country. The question then is, what happens to these marriages if the country splits? Where and how will the split lines be drawn? Would it be based on the four cardinal and intercardinal points? or the three regions before independence. In that case, where will stakes like Quara, Kogi, Plateau and even Taraba be placed? If we look at this in the context of all of this clamor, um, and then we look at, let's even start with the borders. Um, where are we going to draw the borders if, this country, if uh, the country is to break up and then we have different parts? Where do we draw the borders? Do we go to the pre-colonial border do we go to the, the 19, is it 66 or Jeroba, the regional borders that we used to have? Um, where will the boundaries or borders be? Um, will, say, northern Nigeria, for example, will the, the middle belt, the Kogi states and the others, will they form part of northern Nigeria? Will they, will they, will, will, or will they want to be part of Central Nigeria, if we end up having a, um, a country like that, or would they be part of the Southern Nigeria? Where would the border be? So that is one very strong consideration. We have the colonial era boundaries. Then state creation too. Remember, most of the states we have in the country today we are created by the military. And the strong considerations like uh, the nationality, the ethnic nationality of the various components, we are not taking into consideration. I mentioned Kogi earlier. In Kogi State, you have the Yorubas, you have the you have the Hausas. Um, if you also look at uh, Benue State, you have Igbos in Benue, you have Igbos in Delta State. Um, now, where do you draw this boundary? A country as large as two hundred million people. Where do you even start? It's definitely not going to be easy. Security is going to be something that is going to be very, very difficult to deal with boundaries culture i mean somebody's house is going to be in one other country so how do you even start to start mapping out the country when you intend to break the country up into into what fragments i said with so many nations within the nation called nigeria it's going to be pretty difficult each country is given a specific credit rating which is reported by the larger three major credit rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, Fitch and Moody's. Many countries rely on foreign investors to purchase their debt, and these investors rely heavily on the credit ratings given by the credit agencies previously mentioned. Nigeria also accesses funds from outside the country and relies on a good credit rating for it to attract funders and other forms of financing 
such as foreign direct investment. If Nigeria splits, each new region or state will have to build its credit ratings from scratch. Borrowing from other countries and institutions like the IMF and World Bank would most likely pause till each new state establishes a strong economic footing. This wouldn't happen overnight. Also, assuming Nigeria splits and it happens peacefully, how would each state relate with other countries? Now, if we look at international relations, ability to go into international relations and recognition um, as, a country, as, a, as, as a sovereign state, you really need to be recognized too for you to be. Now, will these integral parts have enough goodwill with the powers that be in the, in the United Nations, say the permanent members of the United Nations, to be able to get them recognized. We know what is happening in Palestine today. Um, no matter how strong they've been clamoring, I mean, they've not been recognized as a state by the key countries that matters. So that is another thing to, to, that we need to take into consideration if we're looking at, uh, if we're looking at this, the influence of the permanent members uh, of the Security Council and how they can really influence and help to decide if you get recognized as a state. Then another thing is the goodwill will the country will Nigeria uh, allow or agree for you to be for these other parts to be recognized. That's another thing that will, 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 will come into play. If the if the divorce, if I want to call it that, or if I'm permitted to call it that, if the divorce is not amicable. We look at what is happening with the, with, with, in Catalan, Cat Catalonia and Spain. I mean, Spain is fighting strongly to make sure that, that Catal the, the, the Catalans don't get independent. It's going to be like that. What will the goodwill, if, it will, if it's amicable, then good. Just like the Russia one, everybody will have the breakups. But if it's not amicable, the position or the goodwill of that Nigeria, that the remaining part of the country will, will enjoy internationally, will help determine if these other bits will get recognized or not. It's not as easy as people are making it to see, to look. Now, the issue of security. A country like Yugoslavia broke up in like 1992 into about six different countries. Those six different countries are still struggling up till today. As a matter of fact, I think that just about one seems to be a little bit above water, and that is Croatia. Security cannot be achieved in the short term, nor in the medium term, which is an average of five to, what, say, ten years. There's still going to be struggle with quite a few, you know, infrastructure there. New immigration, new police, new customs, new armed forces. Due to the current state of insecurity, and incessant attacks on people by bandits all over the country. Majority of Nigerians are now calling for the formation of state police. The belief is that state police will be able to go into the forests and successfully face these bandits head on. If the fight against the bandits is sustained, the bandits, most of whom are said to be foreigners, will relocate to the northern part of Nigeria or their countries of origin. That is the belief. Because this is not happening quickly enough, Nigerians believe the country should split. The belief a split is a surefire guarantee way of getting rid of the bandits terrorizing people on highways and communities. The Yorubas, for example, believe that a split guarantees that only the Yorubas would reside in their region. The Igbos believe the same too. However, according to the ECOWAS Protocol on Free Movement, Integration and Security, member states must ensure the free movement of citizens of member states. Although the protocol also allows member states the right to refuse admission to any citizens who are inadmissible under the member states' own domestic law, but does not allow for member states to kick out citizens based on ethnic, religious or tribal reasons. So, basically, assuming Nigeria is split into new countries or regions, 
none of the countries or regions is allowed to kick any foreign citizen out if the said country wants to be part of ECOWAS. Therefore, how will the Igbos or Yorubas kick out the bandits and foreigners in their region? According to Statista, Nigeria's national debt is currently at $151.2 billion. Although another source puts this figure at a conservative $86 billion. Whatever the true situation, if Nigeria splits today, who will be responsible for the debt servicing? Will each new country be settled with a portion of the debt? If so, how will the repayment be divided? Would it be based on geographical location or distribution of solid mineral resources? It is important to note here that the oil wealth has not been shared equally. In fact, very few have access to the oil wealth. So why would people who haven't enjoyed the wealth want to pay a debt they know nothing about? So should Nigeria really split? It is clear we were forced to live together when Nigeria was formed. But elements around us are making us feel we no longer like each other. So should Nigeria split? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. So guys, that's me done for today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I'm Koli Obasa. See you in the next video. God bless. What's going on, people? This is Kali Obasa of thiskaliobasa.com. Did you forget?